Hey, K. Trevor Wilson. I play Squirrely Dan on Letter Kenny. You're watching Ambi. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to our interview with K. Trevor Wilson. How's it going? Thanks awesome. for having me. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Enjoying the pro wrestling. Yes, we are here at Smash Wrestling, New Girl in Town. You actually made it up to their October show too. I did. I did. I went out to Etobicoke, uh, check out the the Cody Rhodes show. Got to meet Cody backstage, which was nice. It was very nice of them to let me go backstage to meet the, <laughs> the performers. How long have you been a wrestling fan for? Ah, uh, geez, I'm like we're stepping into the way way back machine for that one. Uh, I mean, I started watching in the '80s. I think the first, the first match I remember seeing was like uh, Fallout from probably WrestleMania four. It was like uh, 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 it was the, the Bret Hart uh, uh, Bad News Brown uh, <laughs> angle. They're both. Uh, they teamed up to win the Battle Royal, and then Brown threw Bret Hart out of the ring. That was like my first memory okay. of, of watching wrestling. But uh, yeah, so I was uh, very little, very... Some of you weren't born yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so stoked to find out that you're a wrestling fan, but even more so because I'm a big fan of your comedy, so I'm well, really glad that we're much. doing this. Yeah, actually, wrestling's found its way into my comedy. Uh, on my album, I do a whole bit about looking like an 80s jobber. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I, I actually snuck a, a bunch of, uh, I, if you watch the roast battles, I was wearing my Macho Man Randy Savage mm -hmm. shark tooth shades uh, <laughs> in all of the promo stuff for, uh, for roast battles, which is, uh, I guess, kind of like wrestling without the violence. It's True, just, it's you're just really the, going at it at that. It, it, we're just mouthing off. It's just the promo part of wrestling, <laughs> we, except we, we hug at the end instead of fight. It's very true. What can yeah. you tell me about Lobby Lob? The Lobby first, Lob, oh geez. <laughs> the first ever character and kind of person that you decided to write jokes about. This was, I, 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 I'm, I'm told I was about two when I started spouting off Lobby Lob jokes to my family and babysitters. And I don't know, I don't know where I got the name. I don't know where it came from, but uh, essentially it was, I was using the old chicken cross the road, road premise and uh, added Lobby Lob because it sounded more ridiculous. <laughs> it's very existential. Lobby Lob crossed the road because he could. I was I was a deep thinker for a two-year-old. Aside from that one, do you remember any of the earlier stuff that you did write? Um, well, I mean, like the the first jokes that I when I when I started doing stand up, like you know, in, in the circuit, the first jokes I had were a lot of uh, uh, Muppet impressions, which are on my first album. Uh, and I I just used to do a bit where I'd nervously pour a beer down my shirt because uh, I didn't have many jokes in my first year. Uh, <laughs> A lot of physical comedy to make up for lack of writing. <laughs> Apparently you really like Dolly Parton. So where did that fascination begin? Uh, well, I think there's two obvious reasons why people notice Dolly Parton. <laughs> two. But uh, her <laughs> acting and are. her music. Um, sure. Uh, I, I, I've always loved Dolly Parton. I think uh, when, I, when I was a kid, she used to do Christmas specials every year. And uh, I, when I was younger, I thought she was married to Kenny Rogers because they always would do duets. And uh, they put out a Christmas album, which always played at my house. And I've just, I just had this weird obsession with Dolly Parton. She's really an amazing woman. Uh, she, uh, uh, the, her, the guy who got her her first big break uh, sued her for, for royalties when he went bankrupt. And she just wrote him a letter essentially saying, look, hon, you don't have to sue me because if you need money, I got you. And she took care of him. She, uh, she bought uh, all, of her, all of his uh, uh, song library uh, to, so he'd have money and then uh, gave it back to him as a gift. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's She's tremendous. Generous. I love Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes to this title, because I think, I remember seeing this for the first time, and I was like, what is going on? Sex Cop Fire Penis, debut record. <laughs> that is my record, uh, which is available on iTunes yeah. through Comedy Records. Uh, I, I recorded an album a few years ago uh, in Kingston, Ontario, with the Absolute Comedy there. And I was going to call it Between Festivals, because I was uh, in Kingston, which is between Toronto and Montreal, and I recorded at the end of August, so it was between Just for Laughs Montreal and Just for Laughs Toronto, and then someone was like, that's really a douchey name for an album. So I called it Sex Cop Fire Penis, because that's pretty much what <laughs> I talk about on the album. It's the polar opposite of what you were gonna, going yeah, for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, in many ways, I am Sex Cop Fire Penis. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's, it's not my porn name, not my comedy name. That's like my Sexton Hardcastle. That's my 
that's my early 90s edge wrestling name. <laughs> <laughs> I like the reference. I have to say, going back to Roast Battle, you absolutely killed it on there. Like, oh, you thank you so, so much. You were so cutthroat and amazing at thinking on your feet. I, I did not know I was that good at making fun of people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, turns out I've been carrying around a lot of anger. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know it was there. Um, it, it's a lot of fun, and it, it definitely uh, has uh, changed my career forever. Uh, uh, got me a lot of attention in the States, got me on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Congrats uh, on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then, and then that all came directly from Roast Battles. And uh, uh, actually, uh, most of the guys in Roast Battles are huge wrestling marks. Uh, like Earl Skakel, uh, you know, was pretty much doing a Rick Rude impression the entire time. Mike Lawrence is one of the biggest wrestling fans I've ever met. Like, we all tried to get Jeff to make it into a title belt instead of a trophy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, like everyone is a wrestling nerd who does roast battles pretty much. That's uh, awesome. So it's a lot of fun, and it's, it's actually, uh, that's how I, I, uh, I got Blue Meanie direct message me after seeing me on roast battles. Seriously? And uh, I got to chat with the Blue Meanie that's because cool. of roast battles. So that was really cool. Did you geek out when that DM came Oh, through? yeah. No, I yeah. completely marked out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I started doing the little dance from <laughs> WWE No Mercy. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, Rose Battles is crazy, and, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it again this year because uh, we're shooting Letterkenny Season 3 uh, in July, uh, Part 2 in July this, this uh, year. So uh, I'm hopeful I might get asked back to Rose Battles, but at this point I don't know if I'll be ever, ever Rose Battling again. <laughs> On the show you play Squirrely Dan. What's it yeah. like getting into that character? Does it take you a second, or is it pretty easy for you? Uh, every year I have to rewatch the show so I remember how I talked. Because uh, <laughs> I do it, and then and then I don't talk like that ever again. Um, but it, it's... Uh, it, like when I, when I started, when I came up with the voice for Squirrely Dan, it was mostly to do something that the Jared and, and Nate weren't doing with their characters, because they had the very distinct sort of small town Canadian accent and I wanted to bring something with Dan that, that wasn't on the show yet and the one thing I know from playing small towns is there's lots of guys who uh, misuse phrases and put plurals where they shouldn't be and uh, so I added that to Dan and, and like for a couple weeks after we shoot it always takes me like it takes me some time to, to get back to talking normally and yet it takes a bit of prep to, to get ready get to ready talk to like it. that again like uh uh, my, my girlfriend will notice when I stop pronouncing the A's and days, it means I must be getting ready to go back to Letterkenny. Uh, it's something in small town Canada. No one says the A and day. It's always, what are you going to do this Sunday? <laughs> Sunday. I actually met a girl named Sunday. That's how she was introduced. This is my sister, Sunday. And I was like, is that for real? Sunday. And I had to explain. Well, it's Sunday. They just don't like to say the A in the country. <laughs> small things you pick up. <laughs> when you're on set, I imagine that it is so difficult to actually keep yourself together. Because even when I'm watching it, watching you try to keep a straight face, we, like you pull it off. But. We break a lot. My favorite thing is to get Jared going. Because, of course, he never laughs as Wayne. So when you get him to break, that's a, that's a victory. Actually, the, the real test is if you can break the cameraman. That's the, if, if, okay. the, if the camera shakes, you, uh, you had a winning joke. <laughs> We got we got good camera guys. <laughs> Billy, shout out to you, but there's no way he's watching this. He doesn't know wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, being a music website, we also must discuss music. Who are some people that you're digging lately? Uh, uh, well, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Chris Cadell and the Wreckage. Uh, probably my top Toronto band right now. Uh, see, I've been uh, well. I'm going to see Nora Jones. I got tickets because uh, my girlfriend. Uh, exists, and I have to go see Nora <laughs> Jones, and uh, uh, it's very. And I am excited. Actually, I, I do like Nora Jones. Um, actually, you know, I, I, which, I'm a big Broadway guy, so I just saw Book of Mormon for the second time uh, last week. Second so time. I was. Uh, I'm really hot on uh, on the Broadway train right now. If you haven't seen Book of Mormon, music and comedy fans alike go see Book of Mormon. Um, I'm trying to think of other bands. Well, uh, it's weird. It's weird. I, I'm, uh, I noticed Joel Plaskett's in town, and, and I spent uh, like a, a summer following him in the East Coast, oh, wow. uh, but not shows? on purpose. I just I, I was playing the schools oh, okay. 
okay. that he right after he played there and we actually got to see his show once because we ended up coming into town a day early and uh had a day off and got to see joel so i was very happy to see he, him in town uh, a lot of great canadian music i actually had to turn down the junos uh this year because i was on the road with just for laughs but uh, uh the, the guys from my show all cut a a, a sketch with uh, jim cuddy and i was like ah man why did i why do i have to be so <laughs> friggin busy and I missed me- meeting Jim Cuddy. Uh, I saw them uh, at the amphitheater. You forget how many songs Blue Rodeo wrote. Yeah. And then they start one up, and you're like, yeah, of course that's Blue Rodeo. <laughs> and then over and over, it's like, oh, I know this one. Yeah, jeez, come on. How did I forget about this one? Uh, but yeah, I, I, uh, fortunately, I'm not getting out to see as much indie music in Toronto because I've been, uh, I haven't been in Toronto much. Yeah. I, uh, uh, but uh, I try to, try to get out as often as possible. But if you get a chance... Chris Cadell and the Wreckage, that's my favorite Toronto band. Or uh, on the Orbit Rooms, Sunday night, where they play is Horshack, Toronto's best cover band. I'm doing a plug for you, boys. Check it out. Appreciate it. <laughs> Send me a thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap everything up. Is there anything you want to leave with all of your fans who will be viewing? Just any parting words? Uh, well, you know, uh, we got Letterkenny. Uh, the first part of Letterkenny Season 3 will be coming out uh, this summer. So uh, stay tuned for that, and we we're still shooting uh, two more parts to that. So we got a lot of Letter Kenny coming up. You're a busy man. Support live entertainment in Canada, folks. <laughs> Whether it's comedy, wrestling, or music, get out there. Well put. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> no, me. No, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. It's my pleasure. And remember, to everybody viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. See you next time.